Hi, I'm Jess from Paper Pieces, and today I have Karen Stiles from Somerset Patchwork here. Thanks for joining us, Karen. I'm very excited to be here, Jess. What are you going to show us today? I thought today I would show you English paper piecing clamshell shapes. That sounds great. Let's see your technique. Okay, let's go. We're going to start by using the papers from Paper Pieces and the template that comes in the right size to do. I've already cut and prepared some of my shapes before coming along so that we can move along a little quicker. And what size seam allowance do you prefer for clamshells? I like a quarter inch personally. It, um, it just works better with the uh, gathering as we go in the next step. Okay. I use a sew line glue stick, which I place a small section on the back of the, the template and I lay it on top of the fabric on the reverse side of the fabric. Just push down lightly so that you can um, glue it to the surface. And then I place a glue line along the top edge. I start by pushing up a straight line on the fabric and I gather at about a quarter inch little tiny pleat all the way around the top. If for some reason it doesn't glue, you can go back. At the very end, I finish with a straight edge as well. So when you fold in your corners, you need to make sure your seam allowance lines up nice and straight with itself. They do, so that you can see that they, when they join together, like they do along here, that it's a nice, easy edge to join. Now let me do that again so you can see exactly what I did. So you could pick up your shape with the glue pen, a little piece on the back, onto the fabric on the right, on the wrong side of the fabric and along the top edge here. Straight in and gently gather like a little pleat every quarter inch as you go around, finishing with a straight edge. I like how you rotate the shape as you go. It makes it go a little more smoothly. It does. It's easy. You can also see now that it has a very smooth edge on the curve. Don't forget, you could re-glue if it hasn't quite stuck down properly. So now I'm going to get ready to stitch them together like we have on this little sample here. I've got a thread with a needle, no knot in the end of my thread. I'm going to pick them up, right sides together, and I do a gentle pinch, just like that, Jess, see, just there. Okay, so it's making the edge of the paper more obvious. Correct. Okay. That little pinch will then line up on this piece of um, the edge of the paper. Okay. So I line the two of them right sides together, pull those little pieces down, and I do a stitch with my needle right in where the edge of the paper is. I pull through, leave about a quarter inch tail. I do a second stitch. And then on the third stitch, I do a locking knot, which is a, a very interesting knot that sits flat and um, is very tight. Okay. So I take the thread from the eye of the needle around the tip of the needle and pull through and there's my knot Voila. onto the surface. So I need to do that with the whole line of um, clamshells. Okay. So I'll do it again. That way we can see exactly what happens. So pinch, pinch, line it up, pull those little ends down, do a stitch, come through, a second stitch in almost the same position, and then a third stitch, eye of the needle, tip of the needle, and pull through. Okay, and just one more while we're working. <laughs> it's going so quickly. It does. This just helps keep everything straight and in order, so when you've worked out how long your row will be, you can stitch them all together like this and not lose track of your colouring and also it keeps um, everything spaced correctly. Okay, so, there so we go. I noticed you didn't baste the bottom curves of your clamshells. What's going to happen with those? Okay, when we come to the second row, which is on here, that will cover over the gaps. So you just won't see it from the front, so there's no need to baste it? Correct. Perfect. So if we lined them up straight like that, there would be a little gap. 
So that just covers, and it also makes a nice neat edge for the quarter inch seam allowance. Okay. So we now need to attach these to a strip of fabric that will be our um, base. Okay. It will keep the clamshells nice and straight. So we're going to place them on the bottom edge with those accurate seam allowances that we made on the back. Okay. Down here. So we're going to glue this in place. Now I like to use a sew line glue stick to attach the fabric to the paper. But when it comes to putting the fabric to the fabric, the best thing to use is uh, a liquid glue. Okay. My preference is the Roxanne's glue based it. So what we're going to do is turn these over, use the little little section of liquid glue and put a few dots into the seam allowance on the back. Just a few dots. I only do two or three at a time when I'm doing this. Okay. Turn it over, lay it down on the edge and then with an iron I'm just going to gently dry the glue. Okay. The glue doesn't do anything, uh, the iron doesn't do anything other than dry. Okay. The glue. And then I will do the next two. Just a few. Over. And dry. So your first row is just about done? Just about. Then we will get some thread and stitch those down. So see, they're all in place, ready to go. Oh, that is perfect. Now I do start this particular section with a knot. Okay. And that just means that I can I can call up from underneath. I do like to hide my stitch in the seam allowance. Okay. And then I do an applique stitch. Okay, so you're doing a traditional applique stitch along the top curve of the clamshell. It's also known as a blind hem, hem stitch, I've heard it called. Blind hem uh, is a good name too. Okay. So the paper, being where it is, stops your uh, needle from going too deep, which gives you a really nice applique stitch. Okay, so it's best to leave the papers in at this stage. It is. So I will stitch from here to that little whip stitch that we just did and continue along until I finish the row. Perfect. I'm going to show you how to take the papers out now, Jess, because we don't need the paper in. Okay. We're going to remove them each step. So I carefully put my finger down the back between the fabric and the paper. Okay. That's where we started that row. And then very gently pull in the corner here until it releases. And then see how it just carefully rolls out. So the glue doesn't stick permanently. Okay. And then tuck it back in. This top row is the trickiest to do because you do have this extra layer of fabric underneath. So in there, carefully do a gentle roll and it comes out. Okay. Because when you attach your clamshells, you only sewed through the fabric so the paper just comes right out. That's correct. There we go, last one. So if you had a long, uh, longer border than this little section here, you would just keep doing that along the whole length. So there we go, our nice flat piece. You can give it a little press on this top row to make sure that it sits flat. Okay. Now we've got our second row. Uh, and the second row, like I showed earlier, needs to offset slightly so that it fills in the gap. Okay, so there's one more clamshell in this row than in the previous row. Correct. This will be our top edge and then if we go through here, there's our quarter inch seam allowance Okay. down the sides. Now we need to glue this in place using the glue, but I've found a little trick that makes that much easier to do to keep the line nice and straight. Okay, let's see what you've got there. So I've taken one of the uh, the clamshells, okay. one of the new ones. These ones, uh, there's a little bit of mess on the back. Okay. So, And I have drawn a straight line from 
the edge of the circle to the bottom and then I carefully turn it around and place my ruler on with a right angle so it needs to be exact and then draw a line through here. So that gives us now this special little tool that will help line up the next row. Okay. Okay, so we would go back to the ironing board at this point and we have our next row. And remember I said earlier that I only do two or three at a time. We right. still continue like that. Okay. So here's the glue. This time I put a little bit of glue into the seam allowance on the original, the top row of clamshells. Okay. The liquid glue means we can move it and make sure that it's in the right position. So I lay this over. Bit of a guess, we've got this little whip stitch that we did earlier to give us a clue. Yeah. And then this tool that I've got lays down in there. So now we can see the top of the whip stitch, we can see the centre, and it all lines up nice and straight. Perfect. Heat it with the hot glue, uh, the hot iron again, just to, to dry the glue off. And then we will move along, doing two or three at a time. Okay, and then back over. using that tool. See how it just sits in there? Yeah, I just okay. use it all the way down the line. Yeah, I do. I'm going to Perfect. bring it just a little closer so you can see the other side of me. Perfect. Okay. So Jess, I've stitched all the way across the second row now and okay. I'm, I'm coming to the edge. See how we've got to make sure that uh, the halfway mark is there. Okay. And with my stitching this time, I will stop at the edge of the first clamshell. Okay. And what type of thread are you using? I'm using an Aurifil thread. The weight can be uh, whatever you like it to be. Okay. This particular one I think is a 40 weight. Yeah. Okay. So to the end, go through to the back like we did before. Because when we come to chop that off, that's the quarter inch seam allowance. Oh, so there's no need to stitch it down? No. You can see on the back as I'm stitching this, that this time you can see the papers. Remember last time? They were up underneath the, the fabric, our top oh, fabric. They were tucked in there. They were. There we go, there's the second row all in place. Yeah, that looks perfect and they're evenly lined up because of your because magical of the clam. Yeah. So to get them out this time, you still need to release that paper on the back. Okay. And roll them out like we did before. And this time it's easier because as I said, you can see the actual shapes. Doesn't need much, just a light little tug there. It does. The paper does stop you from stitching too deep, okay. as I mentioned earlier with your applique. So it acts as a guide for your needle when it you're does. stitching? I can see on this one that I have just caught the edge of the paper. Okay. But it comes, still comes out. Now, it doesn't matter how long your work is going to be. We're doing this nice short piece for the, the pocket, but if you had a long, length like this. You would just continue in the same manner for as long as you need to okay, do. Okay, that sounds easy. Last thing we need to do, in this project at least, is add the last row of clamps. So okay. I've prepared them, string of pearls, lay it down, and then with this one we would use the glue again, as before, into the seam allowance on the bottom. Two at a time? Two at a time is, is preferable. Place that over. Now because it's the third row or any other rows as we go down, this little tool then will give us the join in here. Okay. As well as the tops of the clamshells and the bottom down there. 
All right, two, iron like we did earlier. Make sure it dries the glue and then do the last two. And then we are nearly done. Okay, double check again, make sure we're all set and press. That is almost it. Perfect, you have three rows of clamshells, which is exactly what you need to make this little clutch. So now that we've got the last row in place, we get the needle and thread and we applique again like we did before. How easy is that? That is so easy. Thanks for sharing with us. If you're interested in any of Karen's patterns, you can find them on paperpieces.com. Happy stitching. Happy stitching.